Well, first of all, I, I really want to thank you all um, for being here today. And before I really get into my presentation, I really want to congratulate the um, class of 2020. You are graduating into the best job market in the history of advertising. And uh, I, I know what you're thinking. I know you're thinking, wait a minute, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm watching every advertising holding company laying off people and there's like 30% unemployment around the world. I'm like, isn't this the worst job market since the 1930s? Um, and I'm here to tell you that no, not if you work in healthcare advertising. Today, the fastest growing segment in advertising is healthcare advertising. The problem is not a lot of people think about healthcare as a career option because a lot of people think that, well, to be frank, that healthcare advertising sucks. So I'm here to show you tonight that healthcare advertising doesn't suck. So first, before we get into the presentation, I just wanted to tell you a little about myself. Um, my name is Rich Levy. Um, I've been here at Click um, for a little more than a year. I came uh, from uh, a, a different company, from the FCB Health uh, Network, where I was there for about 10 years. Um, I'm the Chief Creative Officer. I've been uh, working in advertising for my entire adult life, my entire adult career. I have been a judge at Ken three different times. I was the uh, president of the jury one year and have been really fortunate to work in this industry and I absolutely, absolutely love it. So why do people think that healthcare advertising sucks? Like why should you want to work in, in healthcare advertising? And I can tell you from my own personal experience, I, I spent the first half of my career working in general advertising, doing everything from soft drinks to cars to technology, mobile phones. And I can tell you there is no greater joy than working in healthcare when you can literally help people have longer, happier, more productive lives. When you can tell a parent that their child will be okay. When you can tell a caregiver that their loved one will be okay. Those moments are incredibly powerful. And it makes coming to work every day incredibly, incredibly meaningful. I can think of countless stories uh, of being in focus groups and in research and hearing people talk about their medical conditions and, and, and knowing that there was a product coming to the market that could help them and, and just feeling such joy that we would be helping that person. It's truly very, very special. And in today's world, in our pandemic world, I mean, everybody's talking about health. Everyone's talking about healthcare. We would love nothing more right now than the healthcare concerns of the entire world to go away. And knowing that we are working with companies who are on the forefront of creating vaccines, who are collecting blood plasma, who are doing all of those things to help people all over the world makes it really, really special. So why do people think that healthcare creative work sucks? Well, they think that way because so many of the things that they see on the air or they see in magazines are old. It's the type of work that you've been seeing over and over and over again. But what I'm here to tell you is it's changing. It is changing dramatically. As a matter of fact, the entire reason why I wanted to work in healthcare advertising is because I thought healthcare advertising sucked. I thought that the work that I was seeing was so bad that someone had to do something. And I said, well, that person's going to be me. And I am going to make it my life's work to make healthcare advertising better. But you know what's interesting is that so much of advertising, not just healthcare advertising, but so much advertising that you see in communication that's out there really wasn't that good. Um, if, you, if you think about the world of advertising, a lot of people like to look at Apple and they say, oh my God, Apple's advertising is so great. It's so cool. It's so simple. It's so graphic. It's art directed so beautifully. It's so smart. Well, you know what? It wasn't always that way. At one time, Apple computer advertising looked like this. It was filled with copy. It was badly art directed. It was badly shot. And yes, this was a long time ago, 
but this was what people thought Apple computer advertising was supposed to be until someone came up with a better idea. Old Spice. Old Spice advertising has won every imaginable award known to man. It has grown the category. I mean, you can look at how many millions and billions and hundreds of millions of impressions this campaign has created. But Old Spice advertising used to look like this. And it took a creative team and a strategy team and an engagement team to say, you know what, there's something new that can be done. There's something else that needed to be done. I love the campaign for real beauty for Dove. Why? Because I thought it was a, an incredible idea when it came out, but it also it was such a huge departure from where they were. I mean, this was what everyone thought health and beauty advertising should look like. It was about ingredients. It was about showing someone with beautiful skin. It was all of those things. And it turned out to be wrong that when you showed real people with real problems and, and, and engaged in their real beauty, it made the communication that much more impactful. So what does that mean for healthcare advertising? Why is all of that important to know? It's important to have context because all of those campaigns that I showed you, whether it be Old Spice or Apple or Dove, all started with a team of people at an agency, at a client who got together and said, we're gonna do it differently. We're not gonna do it the same way. That the old ways don't work anymore and we're going to stand up for something new. And that's what we believe here at Click. We believe that if we do things differently, if we act in a different way, if we celebrate work differently, that we can do work that is someday will be celebrated as much as Dove or Old Spice or Apple. And I truly believe that healthcare advertising can be that. Why do I believe it? Well, healthcare advertising has emotion built into its DNA. Everyone wants to understand what's going on in, with their health. If you are sick, you want to have the hope that you will be better. If you have a loved one who has an illness, you want to know how to help and be there. If you have a child, you want to comfort them. I don't have to manufacture emotion with production values, uh, with uh, pithy scripts and all of those things. I can tell the truth about what's coming, what's happening in the world, and the emotion is built right in. And that makes the work that we do that much more powerful. So I wanted to share with you three campaigns that are my absolute favorite in, in, in healthcare advertising that have been done over the past few years to show you the shift that's happening. The first campaign um, was done in Brazil, and it was done for um, a breast cancer um, awareness uh, campaign for a hospital in Brazil that treated cancer patients. The issue was that the, um, the hospital wanted to teach women how to do breast self-examinations. The problem is showing female breasts on social media is against the law. You can't do it. Um, uh, so they ran up against an obstacle. So like all good creative people, they said, you know what? We're going to fix that obstacle. And here's what, what they created. The charity is called MACMA, M-A-C-M-A. -A. They are based in Argentina. They wanted to avoid censorship because they wanted to have a video, put out the video where they can raise awareness about breast cancer and literally show women how they can examine their breasts. But they thought, how are we going to do that if we can't show breasts and nipples? Women's boobs, particularly their nipples, are censored in certain social networks even when showing how to perform breast self-examinations to detect early breast cancer. But we found boobs that aren't censored. Henry's. Hello. Using your three middle fingers, press in a spiral from your armpit downward, going under the breast and covering its entire surface up to the nipple. Don't forget the armpit and upper pecs. If you feel any lump or irregularity, contact your gynecologist. Men can also contract breast cancer. Thank goodness that doesn't go for censorship. Share this video or make your own. All you need is a pair of man boobs. 
during the first week. We reached 48 million views, 193 million impressions on social media, over 700,000 shares, and more than 17 million dollars of earned media. Mac, Mac. Tetas por tetas. Man boobs. Yeah! Mac, Mac. Hashtag tetas por tetas. Hashtag man boobs for boobs trending. The campaign was covered by media on every continent, and it sparked a debate about censorship policies on social platforms. They not only overcame this ban, but they actually used it to their advantage to get more awareness around the issue. Then findet Facebook das voll cool, wenn ich aber versuchen würde. Nein! You think Instagram and Facebook's censorship rules are ridiculous? Para algo de salud que es tan importante poder informarlo en las redes sociales. Man boobs for boobs is the most shared breast self-examination video ever. Take that censorship, Macma. So I, I love that campaign. I, I love everything about it. And the thing that I love about it is that they took the regulations and they took the censorship and they used it to their advantage. If they were allowed to show a woman doing a, a breast self-examination, it wouldn't have gotten any attention or any notoriety. And because they had to work within the regulations and they had to do it this way, it was so much more impactful. The next one that I want to show you is an interesting thought because it's an advertising idea that never created a physical piece of advertising. It was, it was trying to, to talk about um, a skincare for, a, uh, for a sunscreen, but it didn't create normal vehicles, didn't create a television commercial or a print ad or an out of home. What they actually created was a special product to get the idea across. One of the funny sidebars about that campaign is while they created it for an activation as a giveaway um, on a beach, the following season, they were so popular that the following season, they actually mass produced them and sold them with the sunscreen. So a, 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 a tube of sunscreen, all of a sudden you, you bought this doll with it um, for your children um, and they were huge sellers and they sold millions of them and they sold out very, very quickly. Right now, I believe there is endless opportunity in healthcare. Right now, the industry is growing like it's never grown before. And right now, there are literally hundreds of jobs waiting to be filled. All we need are people like you. People like you who want to do it differently, who don't want to do it the same way, who want to take an entire industry in a very, very different direction like-minded people who want to do it 
a whole new way. So my question to you, who's ready? Who wants to join? Who's got the goods? And uh, I can't wait to meet some of you. Thank you.